<laughs> invite you, y'all. Spit. <laughs> I'm on right now. <laughs> hey. Hallelujah. Over me, Spirit, move over me. Over me, Spirit, move over me. Hello, Rebecca. God bless you. God bless you, Rebecca. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, man of God. The handsome pastor, Tony, I appear. God bless you. I'm doing well. His grace is indeed sufficient. God bless you. Doing well. Holy Spirit. is faithful and we thank him we thank him for the spirit of God we thank him for the Holy Spirit oh yes mm, yeah. come on let's worship let's worship come on worship him Zion 
Yande Mazu Yirarabu Shele Basanda Yamada Oh Holy Spirit Fill my soul. Come on, make us whole again, Holy Spirit. Christopher. Oh, Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit touch all of you. May you be baptized by the Holy Spirit. May you be baptized by the Holy Spirit. That's my prayer for you. God, I want you, I want to see you excel in every area of your life. And beloved, I have found that it is, it will take the Holy Spirit for you to be able to do that. Every area of your life, every area. Don't, don't be kidding. Without the Holy Spirit, it's going to be difficult. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh yes. We give way to you now. Ah, come on, let's worship him. Worship him. Holy Spirit, moving on, moving on, make my life whole again. The Spirit move, Spirit move over me, over me, Spirit move. Oh yes. Holy Spirit. Come on. We're talking about a Holy Spirit to give us a fresh anointing to break yokes and seals and just come out of the shell and begin to rise up. Hallelujah. Ah, we have been in darkness for too long. It's about time to break out. We've been scared for too long, beloved. It's about time for you to just, just, Hallelujah. It's about time. It's about time. It's about time. It's about time. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you tonight. Coming to you again before you to receive and maintain that which you have given to us that we have lost it for a long time or maybe it's, uh, it's as a result of our ignorance but thank you oh lord that you have indeed given it back our memories back to remember that which you have given to us the most important gift you ever gave to man the gift of the holy spirit and lord tonight we are grateful to talk about about him Bless each and every one with a, a deep understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ah, we are receiving this gift tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Beloved, we are talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, beloved. The Holy Spirit, the importance of the Holy Spirit. Dan, God bless you. The importance of the Holy Spirit. Um, God knew that um, we couldn't excel without the Holy Spirit. Because again, in the old dispensation, 
we, we were not able to function to our capacity, our maximum capacity as God's people. Because it was a covenant or and a contract between man and God for which anytime we break that we break any of the commandments or the co of the covenant you know we 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 have curse comes upon us and um, it was so it was so challenging that if you break one you have broken all patricia god bless you god bless you my dear and so god by so loving loving us now i want you to remember one thing that this which is you you didn't love god first god loved you first scripture says that we love him because he first loved us all right he first loved us so so god loved us so much that um he has to uh, you know make put an addendum if you will to the covenant that he made because we couldn't keep it well because that the covenant took blood the only way that covenant could could expire is as a result of death and so you see that every year once a year scripture says that the the high priest took blood and uh, entered the sanctuary to make sacrifices for the sins of the people all right and so the the covenant demanded blood now god knew you know who knows this because of he having that agreement with us he has to save man because there was no man 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 was going up and coming down going up on like we're on a treadmill going up and down now god wants us to come closer all right because he want to have fellowship with man so he sent his only begotten son who was fully man and fully divine to come and uh, share his blood once for all once and that was it and uh, we see that jesus christ came to do that now this morning i shared with you that the, the the mother of jesus herself was was conceived all right by the holy spirit and now jesus grew up he has to be baptized he was baptized and during the baptism we see that the holy spirit came upon him and then after that the holy spirit led him into starting his ministry now he had disciples with him and many at times we see that they couldn't do so much or they couldn't even do what what they were supposed they, they, they were they were presented to do now we find out that it's as a result of the fact that the holy spirit has not come upon them all right yet so jesus who has received the holy spirit then in the form of a dove when he was baptized and led then into starting a ministry he was doing all these things all the things most of the, sometimes the, the disciple comes and say master how come we can't do this where well, jesus will respond to them like well ye of little faith all right he wanted to them to build their faith in receiving the holy spirit when the time is come because you cannot receive without activating your faith so you come to the book of hebrews the 6, 11 uh, chapter the sixth verse scripture tells you and i that without the whole without um faith without faith it's impossible for you to even please god are you listening it's impossible and so we need faith we need to activate our faith to receive this holy spirit so jesus when he has finished his work was ascending to heaven all right he told the disciples wait don't go and start spreading the gospel yet wait till the holy spirit come upon you and then you can go you see during the time jesus was with them he never spoke to them to wait for the holy spirit allison god bless you my dear all right so now when he was departing now he's empowering them okay with the tool that will make them powerful beloved this is where you and i have to come in that whatever we we are doing without the holy spirit we will not be able to do it you know effectively are you listening to even preaching the gospel we will not be able to do it effectively without the holy spirit and so and so he told them to wait now we see that in the in the book of acts when the holy spirit came upon them in the day of pentecost that they received power and then they began to do 
all, all uh, I mean, to spread the gospel and all that. But tonight, I want us to look at some people who, at that time, that the Holy Spirit was effectively in working in their lives, <laughs> um, but it was it, it wasn't as prevalent. Okay, it wasn't so. You know, like Jesus told the disciples, wait until he comes. And then when he came, we, we all we all know that in, in that day of Pentecost, that they were all together and people from all over, all over. And uh, they, they heard themselves, even their, their dialects being spoken by these people. Now, the Holy Spirit, I, you know, anointed God's prophets, okay, to speak God's word. Tonight, I want to talk to you about a prophet, about a prophet. And this way, you can then, you can then see who is a, a real prophet, a true prophet, and who is not. Because scripture tells us that there will be false prophets coming. And we have a lot of them these days. Beloved, we have a lot of them. I mean, you need the Holy Spirit to help you to discern them when you see them. False prophets, they're all over the place. Prophesying all over the place. Now, I'm not here to point no fingers other than to let you know that even, even the prophets, you know, spoke the word of God. When the Spirit of God, all right, when the Spirit of God, all right, gave them, gave them the word of God to speak to his people. Are you listening? That is a very that is an important thing. So I want you to go with me and let's look at um, Samuel, First Samuel. Go with me to First Samuel. If you have your Bibles, I hope you do. I hope you do have your Bibles. So go with me to First Samuel. All right, let's look at Scripture here. Now, First Samuel, the the background of this Scripture was when Samuel, the prophet, was asked to go to um, the house of uh, this Bethlehemite. All right, and anoint the next king. Anoint the next king. All right, God bless you, mother. God bless you. Hope you're doing well. Anyway, so we see. You go with me to uh, First First Samuel the 16th chapter. First Samuel the 16th chapter. All right. Now, if you come down to um, verse one, let's see something here in verse one, talking about talking about how the the, um, the 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 holy spirit the spirit anointed god's prophets to speak god's word the, the prophets didn't just just prophet prophesy or prophesize or whatever no it was when god speaks then they speak are you listening to me these days i mean these days people you know, and, and and some of them, I don't blame some of this this uh, uh, prophets too, because it's it's about what you some of you people won't hear, and so you you go to them and they, they they tell you stuff, and most of the time it's what you tell them that they take and twist it and tell you something. But a, a, a true prophet will tell you what you have not even said. Let's look at something here, verse one. Then the Lord said to Samuel. How long would you mourn for Saul, seeing that I have uh, rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the, ben the, the Bethlehemite, for I have uh, provided myself a king among the, the sons. I have provided. God is saying that I have provided a king for myself. Okay? And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a hypha with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you should do. Okay? You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. God is giving a specific instructions to Samuel. The prophet. So I want you to, you know, stay in tow. All right. Now, so Samuel did what the Lord said, and uh, went to Bethlehem, and the elders of the of the town trembled 
at his coming and said do you come peaceably and he said peaceably i have come to sacrifice to the lord sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice then he sanctified jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice verse 6 so it was when they came that he took he looked at Eliab and said surely the lord's anointed is before him but the lord said to samuel do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature because i have refused him for the lord does not see as man sees for man looks at the outward appearance but the lord looks at the heart are you getting the revelation here the lord looks at the heart the lord does not look at the outward appearance of people it is not about how the long gown you are wearing with whatever and, and all that. No. Okay. Watch the verse 8. So Jesse called, you know, the, the, the um, Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse, I mean, on and on and on and on. I want you to look at verse, um, uh, come down to verse, verse, um, verse 12. So he sent and brought him, brought in. Now, you know what? Just stick with me. Just stick with me. I, I you know, just stick with me. Verse, two, verse ten. That Samuel, that Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, "The Lord has not chosen any of these ones." Verse eleven. And Samuel said to Jesse, "Are all the young men here?" Then he said, Jesse said, "There remains yet the youngest." And there, there is he keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went back to Ramah. The spirit came upon David and from that day on, he was never the same again. Beloved, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. David was tending to the sheep. Now he's been anointed the next king of Israel. And the scripture says that, watch this, that, that the spirit came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel finished his job. Watch this, verse, verse um, 14. By the spirit, by the spirit of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a stressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. <laughs> a stressing spirit. What kind of spirit do you think is operating in your life now? A stressful one or a peaceable one? Don't answer me. Let's read something. Um, and Saul said, Saul's servants said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servant who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the stressing spirit come from God is upon you and you shall be well. So Saul said to them, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Then one of the seven answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehem, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war prudent in speech and a handsome person and the Lord is with him glory be to God 
when the spirit of God is upon you, when the spirit of God, <laughs> Maxwell, when the spirit of God is upon you, beloved, listen, I keep telling you, like, let the whole world gather and, and, and plot evil against you. The spirit of God upon you, you are the only person who can refuse you there. Never be afraid anymore. See, when the spirit of God comes upon you, he takes, the, he takes stress out, stress out. When the spirit of God lifts you, then you live in stress. You see, you see the difference in the life of Saul and the life of David. Now, there's a, a, a distressing spirit that was haunting Saul. Camille, God bless you. There's a distressful spirit. Distressful spirit that was haunting Saul. Listen, I, 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 I tell you this. God controls everything. He created everything. Good, bad, ugly is in the hands of God. I often say this. The promises of God for you are yours. But the timing to see those promises come to pass is in the hands of God. Are you listening? God controls the time and the season. So he has the time in his hands. The promises that he has made concerning you, it cannot, it cannot, read my lips, it cannot be destroyed by nobody, no demon, no witch, nothing. Your inability to understand the word of God position you in the place of defeat. Are you listening to me? In the place of defeat. Don't worry about your current circumstances or what you are going through now. Listen, I, I know you are a human being. Yes, we all go through. We all have issues. We all go through stuff. We all worrying about our bills and, and the, the time is come and all that. But beloved, I have learned something. Let me tell you something. Your greatest weapon is for you to understand the word of God. Your greatest weapon is for you to understand the word of God by the help of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Look at verse 16. I mean, verse, uh, verse, verse 13 again. This is where I want you to understand this. Verse 13. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of all his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day. From that day forward. The Spirit of came upon him. Beloved, the life of David was never again. The life of David was never, never, never again when the Holy Spirit came upon him. What am I saying? Beloved, I'm talking to you tonight about the fact that the Holy Spirit anointed God's prophets to speak God's word. And so if you have any prophet speaking to you, well, if you have the Spirit of God in you, you'll be able to discern if they are speaking the word of God or they are speaking out of their head. Especially those of you who like to, you know, visit prophets. This is something, this is, this is a warning to you. You have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. We are living in the times, beloved, if, you, if you're not careful, you will go to the hospital and rather bring more diseases with you back home. That's, 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 a, that's wisdom. I just spoke to somebody. That's wisdom. So be very careful. In the Old Testament, beloved, the Holy Spirit was temporal and selective. It was temporal and selective. Why do I say that? Because in the New Testament, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will be with you. He will be with you and in you forever. Jesus said that. Are you listening? It was temporal and selective. It came upon some, some selected people in the Old Testament. It came upon some selected people. It didn't come upon everybody. Now, God says that in these last days, He's going to pour that, that, the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. 
Are you listening? So position yourself now. So we see that in the, the life of the prophets of God, it was God, it was God who chose whoever he wants to send to do his work and anointed them and the Holy Spirit took over. So it was the, even though even then it was the work of the Holy Spirit. Even then it was the work of the Holy Spirit empowering God's prophets to speak his word to his people. Are you listening to me? Beloved, we cannot talk enough about the Holy Spirit. We can't. And this is why I want to spend some time and um, educate you about the importance of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, look at uh, Second Pro Chronicles. Look at Second Chronicles with me. Quickly, look at Second Chronicles with me. Very quick. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, the 24th chapter. All right, look at the 24th chapter. Oh, yes. I need you, Holy Spirit. I need you. I need you. You know, I can't do without you. Second Chronicles. All right. Second Chronicles. Look at Second Chronicles, the 24th chapter. The 20th verse. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zachariah and the son of Jehoiada, the priest, who stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, why do you transgress the commandment of the Lord so that you cannot prosper because you are forsaking the Lord and also has forsaken you? When the Spirit came of God came upon Zachariah, the priest, when the Spirit came, Beloved, until the Spirit of God had come upon prophets, they didn't prophesy. Upon, uh, until the Spirit of God. These days, I mean, I, I don't know. Until the Spirit of God came upon the prophets, they did not just prophesy. They, I mean, you just couldn't go and, and ask the prophets, Prophet, what is God saying concerning me? And, and, and the prophet just start saying certain things, you know, and all that. And most of the things that they're saying, it's not even true. Because God has not spoken. God has not spoken. I had this guy come, you know, I invited this guy to church. A prophet. Through somebody that I, you know, some young guy. And... Um, by the end of the day, beloved, had it not been for, for God on my side, the church would have crucified me. <laughs> the church would have crucified me because here is the, the shepherd, the pastor, you know, bringing somebody to prophesy over their life but and putting a timeline to wait for that matter. And the time came and nothing was, was, was done. They ain't seen nothing. If, I mean, I'm telling you, if God was not on my side, the church would have killed me. Because these are some serious people looking for answers in their lives. So, beloved, you got to be very careful. You got to be very careful. When it was, look at it again. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zachariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, who stood above the people and said, Thus says the Lord. That say as God. If God hasn't said it, and 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 you be you, some of you, some of you, you know, I even blame some of you. Some of you, uh, you know, let some of these prophets, you know, just do things because it's like you have you have itchy ears. You want to hear what you what you want to hear, and they give you what you want to hear. Be very careful. Be very careful. Second Peter, let me show you something there too. I just want, I want to draw your attention, beloved, to the fact that the Holy Spirit is a key factor in your life. The Holy Spirit is a key factor in your life that without the Holy Spirit, 
No. I, I, I can say this with all boldness. Without the Holy Spirit in you, yes, you, are, you have given your life to Jesus. You are born again and all that. But without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you cannot reach your mask. You cannot be so effective. Just name it across board, anywhere. Whether it's your marriage, whether it's your business, whether it's your education, whether it's your relationship, whatever it is, without the Holy Spirit, if you say you are a Christian, without the Holy Spirit, I don't know. I really don't know. Look at what David did. Look at David. When the Spirit of God came upon him, from that day forward, the Bible says that he was never the same. He was never the same. No wonder the little boy David could stand in front of Goliath, a giant. You know who a giant is? I mean, a giant. I, I am six foot two. Dark and lovely, by the way. All right? <laughs> now, listen. He stood before Goliath. Look at Goliath and says, you. You. Because you know what? David was speaking by the auspices of the Holy Spirit. David was speaking by the auspices of the, of the Holy Spirit. He says, you, I will kill you today and give your head to the birds of the air. Now, what makes a little boy, young boy like that, so powerful, so authoritative? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, beloved. The Holy Spirit. You see the difference when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, beloved? I am telling you, tonight, you are going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So that you can do exploits. You can do more than you have been doing. This is my assignment. Tonight, you are going to be baptized. Tonight, you are going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. We are going to pray. Alright? Oh, what did I say? Second Peter, right? Yeah. Second Peter, go with me. Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one. Let's look at verse chapter one. Ah, uh, if you are there, look at verse um, nineteen. Look at verse nineteen. Verse nineteen. Second Peter, verse nineteen. We also have the prophetic word made more sure. We also have the prophetic word made more sure, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? For what this? For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Beloved, this is a serious business. This is a serious business. This is not a joke. The holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the prophets never speak unless the Holy Spirit has given them the, uh, the, the word of God, the utterance. Are you listening to me? Some of you who like entertaining prophets and going to prophets, I want you to listen very carefully. Most of the time, you put yourself in that place and they tell you what you want to hear. That is not too much of my business tonight. As I want to see you make it. By the help of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? It is so important for you to understand this. I came, I'm going to be very, very short with you. I have just about 10 more minutes. Just to give you this announcement. That beloved, 
you can do more and more and more with the help of the Holy Spirit. I, I shared with you earlier today that Peter, the same guy who denied Jesus and, and didn't know Jesus and was lying and all that, after he has encountered the Holy Spirit, Peter was now even raising dead. I share with you the how, how when Dorcas died in the book of Acts, Dorcas died, they sent Peter to come and raise him up. That is how much faith they even had in the, in the, in the Holy Spirit that was in Peter. The Bible said that Peter was full of the Spirit. Peter was full of the Spirit. Beloved, you need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, I don't know how you're going to make it. Now, don't, don't, don't worry too much about your, your present circumstances. Because it also takes the Holy Spirit, okay, to bring you out. He's, he's working certain things out of our lives. He's working things out. That is what He does. There's so much we need to know concerning the Holy Spirit. I was sharing with the brother earlier on about um, certain things he was telling me about his country and uh, the country prays I mean everybody knows how much the country pray, uh, prays yet there's so much difficulty in that place right now he was telling me so much difficulty finances are so tight over there and, and all across and I'm saying to him that uh, I believe that it is not about how long you pray or it's not about how long you fast without the understanding of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The pulpits have not exposed the Holy Spirit to the people for them to know that in their daily lives, these are people who make the nation what it is. But without the Holy Spirit in their lives, everything becomes a struggle. Everything becomes a struggle. Everything becomes a challenge. Without the Holy Spirit, everything becomes a challenge. <clears throat> and so the country is going through stuff. And of course, there are other negative things of other people consulting, uh, politicians consulting, other mediums and all that. But you see, that should not scare you one bit if... The prayers of the righteous availeth much. With the backing of the Holy Spirit, I don't, I don't think those those things they consult means nothing. It doesn't mean anything, beloved. The Holy Spirit is so important in the life of you, the believer. It's so important. So important. How do you think you can do it without the Holy Spirit? How you think you can do without the Holy Spirit? You can't. All right, let's look in some more scriptures. Joshua. All right, let's look in the book of Joshua. Joshua, the, the, the 27 verse. Joshua 27. Go with me to Joshua 27. Oh, so make me whole. Je Joshua, did I say Joshua? Yes. Joshua 27. Joshua 27. Okay. Let's see some scriptures. Holy Spirit. If, are you there yet? I'm looking for my <laughs> my Bible is full of stuff. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we need you tonight. When we move, yeah. 
Holy Spirit moving up. Make my life whole again. Oh, Spirit, move hey, over me, over me. Spirit, move. All right, what does it say? Uh, all right, keep your hands there. I want to show you something before I go forward here. Numbers 27. Numbers 27. Keep your, your hand there. Keep your hand in Joshua. Come to Numbers. Let me show you something in Numbers. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me out here. Numbers 27. All right? Numbers chapter 27. Look at verse 18. Hmm? Numbers 27. Moving on. Oh, make my life whole again. Spirit move. All right, look at Numbers 27. Numbers chapter 27. Verse 15. Verse 15. Then Moses spoke to the Lord. Then Moses spoke to the Lord saying, Let the Lord, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Okay. Who may go out before them and go in before them. Who may lead them out and bring them in. That the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which has no shepherd. Verse 18. And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, all right, the son of Nun with you, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. The man, a man in whom is the Spirit. Which Spirit is he referring to? The Holy Spirit. And lay your hand on him. And lay your hand on him. Beloved, this is what happened. God said to Moses, Take Joshua the son of Nun with you, a man in whom is the Spirit. When it comes to the things of God in anything that you have to do, beloved, I just can't stress this enough. That you need the Holy Spirit in you in every area of your life. This has to do with the congregation and having somebody to shepherd the people. You need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't do it. No. You'll be using schemes, you'll be using other methods. Um, structures as they call it and all that but beloved when it comes to the things of God it's not about structures it's not about structures you know most of the time we think we have to go to Bible school it's good to go to Bible school there's nothing wrong in going to Bible school but going to Bible school does not make you a pastor going to Bible school does not make you a shepherd are you listening to me some of you who think that going to Bible school make you a pastor, going to Bible school don't make you a pastor. It doesn't make you a pastor. Neither like going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Are you listening? No. No, it doesn't. It does not. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference. Ah, the Holy Spirit. What a paramount thing that you're supposed to have in your life are you listening beloved let me show you something else in the book of samuel first samuel again go with me to samuel first samuel first samuel i want to see show you something first samuel the um first samuel the 10th chapter all right the 10th chapter the 10th verse first samuel the 10th chapter and the 10th verse the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. 
over me a spirit move the 10th chapter and the 10th verse it's time for the church indeed when they came there to you know what let me take it from um verse let me take it from verse six all right then the spirit of the lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them now this is this is samuel i mean this is um um this is uh, look at uh, you know what let me take you back let me take you back to make more sense to you sometimes you pick up scriptures and if you're not careful you run ahead of yourself all right look at um look at verse chapter 10 look at verse 1 samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said it is not because the lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance when you have departed from me today you will find two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelzer and they will say to you the donkeys which you went to look for have been found and now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worried about you saying what shall I do about my son <clears throat> then you shall go on forward from there and come to the terebinth tree of Tabor. There, three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you. One carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistines, Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a strange instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them. And they will, they will be prophesying. Watch this now. You will meet prophets prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will prophesy with them. And be turned into another man. <laughs> when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will turn into another man. You will not be the same. I'm done for the night. I just came to give you this short word. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will turn. You see what it, he says? Then the Spirit of the Lord, look at verse 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and be turned into another man. You will be turned into another man. Come on, let's read on a little further. And let it be, when these signs come to you, that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. You shall go down before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offering. Seven days you shall wait till I come to you and show you what you should do. And so it was when he had, he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. The Spirit of God came and he prophesied. Beloved, as we see in the book of Acts, all right, let me show you something in the book of Acts concerning this um, 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 disciples also. That when the Spirit of God came upon them, they began to prophesy. They began to prophesy. They began to prophesy. When the Spirit of God came upon them. So you see that it says, when the Spirit came upon him, he began to prophesy. He began to prophesy. 
without the Holy Spirit, he wasn't prophesying. Without the Holy Spirit, he was not prophesying. But with the Holy Spirit, he began to prophesy. Why? Because the Holy Spirit makes all the difference. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference. So he began to prophesy. Are you listening? He began to prophesy. Do you want to prophesy? You need the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and John. Come on, let's look at it. Let's look at it. I'm going to give you this last scripture for the day. Oh, Spirit, move. All right. Move over me. Spirit, move over me. Acts chapter 2. Over me. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. When the Spirit comes upon you, boy, there's such a boldness in your life that than, than never before. Acts chapter 2. Verse, verse, um, verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from, he from heaven. Sound from heaven. A sound from heaven as in the days of Jesus when he was baptized. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Watch here. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you beloved, you are not the same. Your thinking is not the same. Your reasoning is not the same. Your heart is changed. Your atmosphere becomes changed. You, 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 you are not the same. That's basically, you are not the same anymore. I want to conclude here with where we started. That the Spirit, the Holy Spirit anointed God's prophets to speak the word of God. They never spoke of their own until they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit gave them that says the Lord for God's people. And here we see in the day of Pentecost that when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to speak. We see that David, when he was anointed, the Spirit of God came upon him. And he was never the same. Able to even kill Goliath. When the Spirit of God came upon the prophets, then they prophesied. Then they told the people what God is saying. What am I trying to tell you tonight? The word of the Lord came to me to bring to you that, beloved, you need the Holy Spirit. See, when the Holy Spirit is in you and you receive a prophecy from a prophet, you can identify with that which is coming out of him if it's of god or or not if it's of god or not many of us we didn't take this seriously and we receive a lot of proper lies so much so much of you have lost so much in the hands of people who gave you prophecy in an exchange of whatever you got 
May you receive the Holy Spirit tonight. May you receive the Holy Spirit tonight. Receive the Holy Spirit tonight. That this way, you will no longer be the same. The Holy Spirit will prompt you, will give you promptings to know whether to go or not to go, to wait or not to wait, to move or not to move, to speak or not to speak. The Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will never be the same again. Everything in your life becomes in alignment with the plan, original plan of God for your life. Beloved, this has nothing to do with church. It has nothing to do with church. Are you listening to me? You being filled with the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with church. Now, it has everything to do with what with what God uses you to do in the church. And so be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you know that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will do everything. You, you, you see what happened? He was never the same anymore. He was a different man. He was a different person. The, the disciples were, became different human beings. Look at Peter who was afraid than anybody, who was lying. He didn't know Jesus. Now he is standing there and telling the thousands of people, Hey, you people have to know something here. The Holy Spirit is now at work. The Holy Spirit is now at work. It's, we are not the same people as you think. Beloved, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your life is never the same. Your business, never the same. Ministry, never the same. Marriage, never the same. Your lifestyle is never the same. I came to present the Holy Spirit to you if you have not received the Holy Spirit. You, yes, you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about immersing in water. That's the baptism of John for repentance. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but okay, Pastor, how do I get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Well, Scripture tells you and I that Peter, for example, lay his hands on the, on, the, on, the, on the guy who was lame, sick, and got healed. Paul lay his hands on some of the disciples who didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues and prophesy. David received the Holy Spirit and he was never the same again. I am going to pray for you right now for that impartation of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you right now that the Holy Spirit, but you must be ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Because he will not force himself on you. The Holy Spirit, he's not a rapist. He doesn't force himself on anybody. But this is the, the greatest promise that God gave to you. This is the best promise. That Jesus says, I have to leave and I will send you the Holy Spirit. He would even testify of me. But he will be with you. And in you forever. Like I said, in that old dispensation, if you want to even talk about the old dispensation, the Holy Spirit came upon a selected people. It was a selected people, not on everybody. But in this new dispensation, in this new, in this better covenant, the Holy Spirit is here for you. Receive Him now. Receive Him now. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus give your people send the holy spirit right now upon them in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i pray right now that the holy spirit be your portion receive him right now just close your eyes and just begin to pray and ask god to baptize you in the holy spirit right now right now baptize you in the holy spirit beloved that's it Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people wherever they are watching from. 
they need the Holy Spirit in their lives so that they can mount up with wings like the eagles be able to fulfill every promise of you concerning their lives in the name of Jesus fill them right now Holy Spirit move upon your people right now wherever they are in the name of Jesus for those who are desiring you right now and they have opened their most holy faith to receive you fill them fill yourself in them right now in the name of Jesus beloved if you have also not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior you must do that right now okay that's the best decision you will have ever taken in your life and if you are that person pray this prayer with me say Lord Jesus I thank you for hearing your word I thank you without you I can't do it you 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 cleared all my sins with your blood shed on the cross of Calvary I received that work you did for me and I believe it and I thank you come into my life now be my Lord and Savior and write my name in your book in the name of Jesus I pray this beloved if you just pray that prayer also it's as simple as that it is not about somebody knocking you on your head or or giving you an uppercut for you to receive it no it is as simple as that you just receive it by faith that's it and watch what God is going to do through the Holy Spirit in your life well I brought you this short word I believe you've been blessed let me hear from you go to the website of this ministry Patrick Quino Ministries all right and uh, be part of it okay let me hear from you God bless you tonight have a wonderful sleep wherever you are if you are sleeping already may the angel of the Lord visit you and may the Holy Spirit empower you till I see you same time same time I want you to know that you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in God and in all thy getting get understanding